Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for our worship devotional. Please join me as we sing Blessed Be Your Name. Sunset sky, but my one regret. 
darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. Good evening, Orange County family. My name is Landon. I'm Jerusalem. I'm Hudson. And we are the, the Taylor, Taylor family. family. We are so excited to welcome you to a very special night of worship. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 89, verse 1, I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth, I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. You know, to the world, singing songs of praise and joy in these times of darkness and uncertainty seem weird. But it's this very joy and peace that surpasses all understanding that sets us apart as children of God. So we are so excited for our lineup that we have tonight. We have special guest song leaders from all the way from Broward County, Florida, and an exciting devotional from our very own Brian Craig. So before we continue singing, please join me in prayer as we continue to praise God. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for blessing us with mouths that we can sing out uh, great praises of worship to you. I pray that you can embolden our hearts as we sing songs of joy and jubilee and that we fill the world with great peace and, and happiness and joy that surpasses all understanding. We're so excited to be amongst our friends and family tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the opportunity you've given us. I love you so much. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Let's have a great night of worship, family. Thank you. Give life. You are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. You give life, you give life. You are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord, it's your So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Sing together, you give life. You give life, you are love. You bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord, it's your breath, it's your breath in our lungs, so we
shout your praise Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing Great are you, Lord And all the earth will shout your praise Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing Great are you, Lord. And all the earth, and all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Till I'm 
shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me Snow wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me Snow shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me Hey, what's up, Orange County? Uh, my name is J. Brian Craig, or my friends just call me Brian. Uh, I'll tell you why I use the J here later. But um, it's uh, great to be together. Thanks for inviting me to join you for your worship devotional. And uh, I'm sure it's been a great time wherever you are worshiping God. And I appreciate um, Ryan and Virginia and uh, the work they do as worship leaders. I get to do do some fun stuff with them sometimes we've been uh i'm out here in in my uh, garage studio i've been out here for several days working on um a project for this coming sunday we're going to have all of la together in a virtual sense as far as our, our worship service goes on the stream so um that's something ryan and virginia were helping me with as well um lending their talents but i hope uh, i hope the worship's been great um i was asked to talk to you here a little bit about worship and uh, we're going to be looking at John uh, 4 if you want to turn there uh, but you know I wanted to talk about just the context that we're in right now worship in the COVID-19 con uh, context that we're in obviously is very different than anything we've ever experienced in our lifetimes um, and uh, for uh, for us personally we just had our sixth service streaming live from our uh, our living room um, so we do it live. Um, I know a lot of churches have been had the wisdom to pre-record things, but we started live. Uh, we had this um, guest speaker planned, and so we did a house church that very first Sunday, and, and so we brought all of our streaming equipment and put it all in my living room, and I thought, oh, well, let's leave it set up because it might be a couple weeks of this. And of course, now it's been six weeks of that, uh, but we left all of our cameras and all that stuff, so it's like, well, we have all this stuff. We might as well stream live so my family is my uh, crew and uh, somebody's doing the lyrics and my son sets up all the the cameras and just doing the switching and you know kind of making it happen but along with that doing it live we've had the the joy of, of making some mistakes um, you know one, one of the early weeks we were playing a video and it was a uh, somebody had had uh, filmed a, a video for our offering talk in their backyard and so the audio was kind of quiet. There was a lot of, you know, background noise and birds, and it was kind of pleasant. But the person was talking pretty quietly, 
and there was a little bit of a rumble and so we were trying to figure out some way to fix that and so we're all talking uh, amongst ourselves but we didn't realize that we hadn't muted the uh, audio so you could hear us talking and you can barely hear the person you're supposed to be listening to and so then uh, all these comments start coming in we can hear you guys and um and then this last sunday uh was awful we um had a uh, we've had been having different brothers speak and kind of trading out who preaches uh but this last sunday um uh, dave atkins preached uh, for the second time and the last time he preached was three weeks ago and um, he wore the same shirt. He says it's not the same shirt, but it looks exactly the same. He says it's a, another black shirt. But he wore the exact same shirt. He filmed the the sermon in the same spot, and everything was the same. And so somehow we mixed up the videos, and so we played the wrong video. It happened with somehow the transferring of the of the link to download the file and everything. And so, you know we 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 are the service is kind of going smoothly where you know we had some live songs and and then we you know we had some pre-recorded songs we've been doing stuff with different um uh singers and musicians from around our 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 own, own little local congregation kind of making mashup videos and stuff and so we had one of those anyway we get into dave's lesson and all of our phones start blowing up and the 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 chat starts blowing up this is the sermon we heard three weeks ago <laughs> and we didn't have the i mean the one that the new one we still had to download and it was a giant file so then it's like we're live though and there's 160 people on the stream at that moment listening 160 households you know and um so it was awful, an awful moment. But we ended up kind of changing the order of the service as we were downloading this file. And, um, you know, we kind of moved. Some, so we were playing the other videos we had. And anyway, it was awful. But we got it done. And uh, the, the people in our ministry uh, have said they appreciate watching us struggle and just appreciate the live aspect. Because, you know, we, we miss something that we can experience together, right? Being at church together. And uh, even right now, as I'm speaking to you, I'm trying to picture you, you know, listening. I'm just trying to picture the Orange County building and picture all of your faces because it's really hard to talk to my webcam, but uh, I'm going to do my best. So I'm just trying to picture the Orange County I lo know and love in my mind. But uh, thank you for, for inviting me to, to share a little bit. So where we worship uh, is a super important thing in Scripture, and it's, it has an important history in, in the Bible, where and how we worship. Um, where we worship, specifically where we worship is a big deal in the Old Testament especially. Uh, but Jesus said something about this. He commented on where we worship uh, and, and kind of the, the, the debate about where we should worship in, in John 4 when he's talking to the woman uh, at the well. So go ahead and turn over to John 4 and uh, give me an amen when you're there. That's a dumb streaming joke. Now that I'm like almost 50, I just freely make dad jokes all the time and bother my kids but i'm just fully embracing my dumb dad humor so um okay john 4 we can't read all of this um because of time but you guys know the story uh but as as they get into um the nitty-gritty uh there and he, you know talking about her relationships she changes the subject which is often happens you know if you get into a, a spiritual conversation with somebody and it gets a little uncomfortable a lot of times they kind of turn it to whatever the maybe doctrinal debates or something to kind of change the subject. And it seems like that's what she does. Um, in John 4, verse uh, 19, it says, Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. So the, the subject, we, we've heard that topic before, uh, worshiping in spirit and truth, and so that's what we're going to talk about. But the, the context is talking about where we worship. Jesus says where we worship is in spirit and truth. That's the, the, the time that we're in. 
It's in spirit and truth. So this is a time that sort of tests that, right? Because we're used to a certain worship setting. We're used to being all together. For you guys, it's at the Orange County building. You can leave all your equipment set up. All the band people can leave all their stuff. I'm very jealous of that. We have to lug in all of our equipment every single Sunday and set it all up. But amen. I'm I, I'm happy for you, for you guys and, and your space. And I actually love our space. We got a we uh, South Bay. The the group I'm a part of has recently launched into two uh, worship locations on Sunday. So we get to be in the. Uh, the one that's the southern of South Bay. Uh, they call it South South Bay, but that just sounds so dumb to me. So we're trying to come up with a better name uh, than South South Bay. But um, but we are in. Uh, we we meet at this place called the South Coast Botanic Gardens. So it's gorgeous, and there's a meeting facility in there, meeting meeting space. Uh, the the grounds are gorgeous. The meeting space isn't necessarily anything fancy, but it's just cool to be in the Botanic Gardens. Anyway, I digress. That's where we have been meeting. I love that space. So it's been really different, right? Uh, Trying to worship God on your couch, watching a webcam or watching, um, you know, your phone or watching the TV if you're sophisticated and can figure out how to do that. Um, you know, it, it's very different. But but Jesus said where we worship is in spirit and truth. So I want to drill down on those two things. First of all, uh, let's talk about the context. Where, what is she talking about in terms of this mountain and that mountain? And we don't have time to really dive into this, but a lot of times we look at this story and we, we kind of we don't really take time for that part or, or we don't really have the context of that part. But what she's talking about is Jeroboam and uh, when he moved the center of worship. So so Israel uh, was a united kingdom under um, Saul and then under David and then under Solomon. But after that, uh, because of the sins of Solomon, God says your, your kingdom is going to be divided. And so the, the kingdom was split. And so there's the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And you don't have to turn there, but I'll just read a little bit uh, from 1 Kings 12. Jeroboam uh, is now leading the northern kingdom, while Rehoboam, has, uh, the son of Solomon, has the southern kingdom. And uh, it says in, in, in 1 Kings 12, 25, Then Jeroboam fortified Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim and lived there. From there he went out and built up Peniel. Jeroboam thought to himself, the kingdom will now likely revert to the house of David. If these people go up to sac offer sacrifices in the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem, they will again give their allegiance to the Lord, Rehoboam, king of Judah. They will kill me and return to King Rehoboam. After seeking much advice, the king made two golden calves. He said to the people, it is too much for you to go to Jerusalem. Here are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. One he set up in Bethel, the other in Dan, and this thing became a sin. The people came to worship the one at Bethel and went as far as Dan to worship the other. So I, I recently learned more about this. I've been uh, going to, to grad school since 2016, and I'm actually in my last class. I'm in my last paper due on Tuesday, so I'm excited about that to be done, but um, getting a master's in ministry. But uh, but I, I had a class uh, this last semester on, uh, on, on Old Testament history. Specifically, it's really uh, on the period of the kings. And I, I hadn't really realized this, but so Jeroboam is operating out of fear and, uh, and out of a desire to control. He's operating out of fear and a desire to control. Remember that because that's really the opposite of worship is idolatry and, and trying to turn to things that we can control because we're afraid. That's exactly what uh, Jeroboam is doing. And he's afraid that he's going to lose uh, the, the, the loyalty of the northern kingdom because they're going to go to Jerusalem to, to worship. And that's what they were supposed to be doing was going to Jerusalem. So that's what the woman is talking about. This is many, many, many years later, uh, you know, thousand-ish years later, uh, she's talking about this, this uh, st there's still this debate of where do you worship and, and, and because the northern kingdom moved to this other spot. So he, he moved where to worship. He also changed how to worship in a, in a horrible way. Now, I kind of always thought he was, uh, these were some other god that he was worshiping, you know, idolatry. But, but scholars think, no, he was still, he was, he was trying to worship Yahweh. Yahweh was the god of Israel. And in those days, everyone saw, like each um, nation state had sort of their own god. This is, you know, uh, our god. And, and so, so as far as the nations around Israel, they saw Yahweh, uh, which is God's name, as as the God of Israel, right? And uh, and Israel said, yes, he is our God. He's also the God of all nations. And, and they knew a time is coming when all all people will know Yahweh. But so, so Jer Jeroboam is still trying to worship Yahweh, but using these golden calves as an object of worship. Because he says, these are 
these are Yahweh. These are the God. This is who brought you up out of Egypt. Does that make sense? So he, he, he's not worshiping some new God. He's just changing in a horrible way, changing the way that uh, people are worshiping Jehovah or Yahweh, uh, the, the Lord God, uh, the, the God that we know, the God that we worship. And, and obviously none of us would, would fall into bowing down to a golden calf. But we all can fall into uh, f- failing to do things God's way because we, uh, out of fear, we want to have a desire to control. And so we turn to things other than God and worship those things. That's the definition of idolatry, right? Worshiping anything other than God. Uh, there's passages in the New Testament that talk about greed being idolatry. Why is greed idolatry? Because you are looking to money and possessions to, because you're afraid and you want control. So you're looking to something other than God. That's what. Uh, that's why greed is a form of idolatry, right? So what does this mean for, for us? I think all of us have ways that we're tested with idolatry. And the, the way to overcome idolatry is worship in spirit and truth. So we're going to talk about worshiping in spirit and truth, but, but why? Because we all struggle with idolatry. Maybe you've never bowed down to a golden calf, but I bet you've looked to something other than God to fill you up. Whether it's your job, whether it's your career, whether it's money, whether it's a relationship, um, whether it's success, you've looked to something to kind of fill, fill that up. And uh, it can even be a good thing. It can even be something that is, is, is meant to be even for God, right? Uh, in this case, you know, it, 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 he was way off in, in how he was trying to worship God, but it still was under the semblance of worshiping God. And so we can look to even religion or other things, uh, and, and those things can become idolatrous. Uh, my best friend, Marshall Mead, you guys all know the Meads. They, they were there in Orange County for many, many years, and I really miss them terribly, and are ma- I'm mad at them for moving away. But I, I appreciate their heart to serve. And he has been pouring himself out for the World Discipleship Summit uh, for years now. And uh, just talking with him about it and, and what do we do about it and all of that, uh, you know, coming up in July. And, you know, he, he shared recently that he, he has seen how, you know, he, he's put so much work into the World Discipleship Summit, but, but that when he puts so much into something, it can easily become idolatrous. It can easily become something that he's looking to for identity or looking to to fill himself up. And so... You know, he's had to wrestle, you know, with this, with everything going on. And can we have the discipleship summit or do we have to postpone it or what? You know, we we can't get a facility and can we and when? And, you know, all of these things, all these questions. And he's he said he kind of went through a period of even being mad at God. Like, God, what are you doing? This is not for me. This is for you. But it, it's been a real test of his heart. And, I, you know, I can relate to those kinds of things, those tests of our heart. And, and why am I doing what I'm doing? Even for me, like with music. And with writing songs for, for the church and, and with being in the ministry and serving people, those things can even become something that I'm looking to instead of God himself. Do you know what I mean? Um, and and I, I could share a lot of different stories about, you know, times that God has allowed me to be tested to see, what are you really in this for, Brian? You know, are you in this for yourself? Are you in this to make a name uh, for, for your music or something or, or try to you know, be liked by people, or are you in here just to serve me? Are you in this to serve me? And and those times of testing, I don't like them, but they're good because they remind me that I've got to worship God in spirit and in truth. I, I was just tested this week, and um, uh, you know, I, I won't share all the story, but but um, I was asked a couple years ago to write a a song uh, for a, a movie, a movie that was put together uh, by some 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 people in our family of churches, and. Um, you know, specifically for this movie. And, uh, you know, I got a lot of direction and spent a lot of time and, and, and wrote the song, uh, all the words, everything. The, the, the feel was exactly this feel that they wanted for the movie. That, and they, they even referenced a certain song. They wanted to kind of sound like this song. So, I, okay, I wrote a song that sounded like that song, but, but with my own words that fit the, the movie and all that kind of stuff. And uh, spent a, a ton of time, went into the studio, recorded it, a lot of feedback, a lot of back and forth. And we got it done. It sounded great. And then, you know, I saw an early release of the movie and, and they used this, this, um, this, this song that I wrote as like the opening se- uh, sequence. And it was so cool. It just fit the mood perfectly. And, it, uh, it, you know, it was upbeat and happy. And it, it you know, kind of got your, I, I don't know, I, obviously I like it. I wrote the song, but, but I, I, I really loved that part of the movie. Anyways, um, 
my I got my fan the, the the movie finally was released and I got my family together to watch it this week and so we're all sitting there and, and we're you know they know that I wrote the song and everything for it and so then we're sitting there watching the movie and they replaced my song <laughs> with another song so there's a totally other song totally different feel totally different mood and uh, you know in the moment I was kind of like wow that's weird but then you know as I was trying to go to bed that night trying to sleep I'm like it was just bothering me like why did they change that song, you know, and what, did they not like me, or they didn't like the, the, you know, how it sounded, or what, what happened, or, you know, and, and just, you know, your mind starts turning, and you feel, feel different things, or whatever, um, but it was good for my soul to kind of, like, let go, and just go, you know what, it doesn't matter, right, it doesn't matter, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, God, I'm, I'm here to serve God, I, you know, I, I'm, just, I'm surrendered to Him, whatever He wants to do with me, however He wants to use me in, in this world, uh, I am here at your disposal, God. And um, it was just a good test, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And I, I hope I, I share that um, it sounds kind of trite a little bit in, in terms of, um, you know, people are dying right now and there's uh, uh, medical professionals who are on the front lines uh, serving us and serving our country. So, you know, that's the other thing I'm telling myself. This is so stupid to be annoyed by this or so dumb to be bothered by this when there's such intensity, you know, going on, an, an intense struggle going on in our in our country. But I share that just because you probably have things like that that might seem trite, but it's an opportunity for you to put your trust in God and not in these other things. So let's talk about spirit and truth briefly here. Okay, spirit, and I'm I'm not going to have time to dig into this as much as I wanted to, but let's talk about spirit. Okay, so, so when you think of the spirit, worshiping in spirit, um, when Jesus talked about the spirit, like in John 3, the chapter before this, he said... You, you look at the wind. You hear the sound, or you can't see the wind, but consider the wind. You hear the sound of the wind. You see the effects of the wind, but you you can't see the wind itself, right? Uh, so there's this idea. The spirit is is the immaterial, but but interacting with the material. God is seen through what He has made. Uh, Romans one says that God can be clearly seen. The invisible qualities of God, Romans 1 says, can be seen and understood through what has been made, Romans 1. So, so there's an there's a interaction between uh, the material and the immaterial, and, and uh, they, they call that sacramentalism, the idea of, of, of through a sacrament being able to understand something that is uh, immaterial or that is beyond the moment. Like, for example, baptism is the point at which your sins are washed away. It's a, it's like a wedding ceremony. And at this point now, you are in the kingdom of God. You're, but but there's not, First Peter says, there's nothing magical about the water. It's not the removal of dirt from the body. It's the pledge of a good, clean conscience towards God. It's something that's happening between your heart and your character and the grace of God. Uh, and and you, you are, are participating in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ um, Romans 6 says. So, so there's something, uh, you know, the spirit is, worshiping in spirit is, is being able to intersect with that immaterial world, being able to get a sense of God and his hugeness, his vastness, his incredible nature. You know, think about how dumb this golden calf is that these people were worshiping compared to the immaterial God that made the entire universe. They didn't even understand how vast and how uh, incredible it is as we know in our modern times, right? But we still, we tend to look towards these stupid little things. Why? Because God is spirit, right? And, and so we want something we can touch. We want something we can handle. We want something we can hold on to. We want something we can control. That's what idolatry is about, controlling because of fear. And yet, worshiping God in spirit, you have to let go. And you have to open yourself up to God and his fullness and his reality. You know, when we worship God in the church, uh, the the, the point of being there together is to try to get a sense of, of the, the spiritual reality of heaven. Our names are already written in heaven, the Bible says. Um, the temple even, it's, you know, even the temple on earth, uh, Hebrews 8, 5 says, was just a copy of the one that is in heaven. And when you connect with God, when you pray to God on your own in spirit, uh, Romans 8 says, the spirit intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. We need the spiritual. We need to get beyond the physical. We need to worship God in spirit. So we got to open our, 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 our minds and our hearts and our, our, our eyes up to God's fullness and his amazing nature and who God is. God is so much bigger, so much more incredible than we could ever imagine. 
And then we also worship God in truth. What does that mean, to worship God in truth? I, I think of it as meaning honestly, uh, to, to open yourself up, to be vulnerable, right? To be real. Uh, 1 John 1 talks about walking in the light as he is in the light. There's no, there's no hidden, there's nothing hidden. You're, you're exposed and you're going, God, here I am. Uh, you, you think of the two sinners' prayers in Luke 18. Um, they're, they're both sinners, but one is a, uh, a religious sinner and one is a tax collector, right, in Luke 18. And, and Jesus says that the, the religious man, you know, is like, oh, God, I thank you that I'm not like all these other men. And he's praying, Jesus said he prayed about himself, right? And yet um, the tax collector beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And uh, he said, that's the one that went home justified. So God is looking for truth. God is looking for us to be real. God is looking for us to be vulnerable with him and open and honest with him. And so worshiping in spirit and truth, that's something you can do anywhere. That's something you can do right in your own home every Sunday when you connect on the live stream. It's something you can do every day in your daily devotions is worship in spirit. Connect with the the reality, the, the most awesome nature of God that you can imagine. And also worship in truth, being real, being honest, bringing who you are to God. Um, You know, when when you uh, when you do that, when you see God in in His fullness, God is always so much bigger and so much broader and so much more incredible than you can imagine. And when you uh, when you really get honest and you get open about yourself, you also realize that you are more fallen than you thought. You you are so much more far away from being like Jesus than you want to be. Um, you know, at this very moment, as you're listening, you are so much more sinful than you realize, right? You are so much more sinful than you realize, but God's grace is so much more vast than you realize. God's uh, amazing love is so much broader than you imagine, right? That's what Paul said he wanted our eyes to be open to, the, the, the height and the width and the depth of the, of the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, and so when you worship God in spirit and truth, you get connected to both realities. Your own sinfulness and how much you need God, how desperate you are for God, and then how, how, how amazing and how incredible God is and so deserving of our worship. So make sure you take time every single day uh, to worship Him, uh, wherever it is. It might be the corner of your balcony. It might be going on a walk. I go on prayer walks with my dog every day just to get out of the house um, uh, you know, have my own little spots I go to be with God. Figure out what does it mean for you to daily worship God in spirit and truth. And I hope this brings something, uh, this, this thought brings something to uh, the next time you're sitting on the couch uh, worshiping uh, through the live stream. I pray you think about worshiping in spirit and truth. Uh, may the peace of God be with you. Love you all. And uh, can't wait till we can, can be together and give lots of hugs. God bless. Thanks, Brian, for sharing your heart with us. Um, We're going to continue to worship together now singing Do It Again, which is an incredible song that's helped me through some really dark and personal challenges in my life, just to remember and reflect on God's faithfulness and just how He he never fails. Let's sing. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never Fed me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. Lord, you never fail. I know the night 
song we're going to do is a new song. It's called See a Victory. And we chose to do this song tonight because the lyrics I think are so appropriate for our time. Uh, let's sing this together. The weapon may be formed. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. And when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the 
God, I soon knows only how to triumph. Oh, my God will never fail. My God will never fail. Oh, I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory for the best.
All right, the final song we're gonna sing tonight is God You Reign. Let's sing it out. Sing you paint the night. You paint the night. You count the stars and you call them by name. The skies proclaim God You Reign. And your glory shines. You teach. joining us tonight. We hope and pray you had a great time. In fact, feel free to like our video and share it online. If you want to get connected with our church family or want to know more about God, you can message us directly. You can also contact us through our website. You can follow and like us through Facebook and Instagram, or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You won't want to miss this Sunday. We are going to be live streaming our worship service, and that's going to be extra special because we will be combining with our ministries from the uh, LA congregation. So it'll be really fun. Uh, 9 30 a.m. Kids Church, 10 a.m. regular worship service on Facebook and YouTube. On Friday, May 1st, we're going to have a youth and family night for all families with 5th through 12th graders, and you will also find that on Facebook and YouTube. All right, have a great evening. Good night.